We all know the story. Now disgraced actor Jussie Smollett, if that's how you pronounce it. I never heard of this guy before he staged this attack, but he did it to add gasoline to the burning hatred that the media has for Trump and his supporters. We will go over the reason for the attack, why the media reacted the way that it did, and what we can learn going forward. Stay tuned. John Doyle in. Heck off, commie. Hello there, pals and gals. Welcome, as always, to Hack Off Kami. As I stated before, this guy, Jussie Smollett, he claims that he was attacked by some white Trump supporters in downtown Chicago because you know that if you're a white Trump supporter, your stomping grounds, I mean, is downtown Chicago. Uh, like, if you compiled a list of, like, every Trump supporter and then you just blindly selected one of them, the probability that they live in downtown Chicago is extraordinarily high. And so he says they called him racist and homophobic slurs. They tied a noose around his neck. And we all know the story. And, of course, we all knew from the beginning that it was just total BS. He refused to give his phone to the police until, like, two weeks after the incident is said to have occurred. Yeah, okay. So now this happens. All we have initially, since he wouldn't provide any evidence, is just his word that it happened. That doesn't matter. Nancy Pelosi comes out and condemns this as racist and homophobic. Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez declares it as fact. Cory Booker, Spartacus, calls it a modern-day lynching. Kamala Harris agrees with it that it's a modern-day lynching. What does that mean, a modern-day lynching? Here's what that means as far as I can tell. Because America, racism in America has virtually disappeared. No one in America is legitimate, is like... And they say, oh, well, the KKK, it has like a few thousand people in it, somewhere between 5,000 and 8,000, according to the Southern Poverty Law Center. So your evidence of American racism is that a few thousand Americans are Klansmen. Therefore, the whole country is systematically racist. It's like, okay, the KKK peaked in the early 1920s during what's referred to as the Second Klan. And they had like between three and six million members. But the Second Klan openly declared that their biggest enemies were Catholics, Jews, and blacks in that order. So when they talk about the KKK being these white Christians, it's like, sure, but they're peak their biggest enemy during their peak was other white christians they're also lynching black people sure so back to that the reason that what happened to jesse smollett was supposedly a modern day lynching is because it couldn't just be a normal lynching things like that don't happen anymore american racism has disintegrated to such a degree that now our racism is just a couple white guys beating you up and then leaving instead of i don't know murdering you publicly for ceremony and then it turns out even that story is fake and he says well the reason i faked it is because i received a threatening letter in the mail and it wasn't given enough attention so he wanted people to take the hatred against him seriously, and it's like, okay, so your plan, because you received a threatening letter in the mail and no one took it seriously, so your plan is then to establish credibility by faking a hate crime on a larger scale, and now we're supposed to say, okay, this one was fake, yes, but we should pay attention to the other one because that was the real travesty out of all of this. And then, of course, when Kamala Harris is confronted with this, she's asked if, you know, she stands by the statement she made about it being a modern day lynching. She starts stuttering, just looking around. She's, well, well, you know, we, we, we don't have all the facts. Day lynching that, um, uh, sorry, <laughs> Jesse Smollett. Um, I, okay, so I will say this about that case. I think that the facts are still unfolding, and um, I'm very... Um Right now, we don't have all the facts. We had all the facts before when we could just condemn it as racist and call it a modern day lynching. But now that we find out it's fake, well, you know, we can't just jump to conclusions. There have been so many of these hate crime hoaxes and the stories always get so much attention because oh, this is what Trump's America has done to us. And then they always turn out to be fake. Every time you had the waitress that faked the racist note that was left for her, you had uh, that same month, the waiter that can, had the people that left him a note calling him a terrorist, the racist graffiti in the bathroom at the Missouri high school, of course, turns out to be the worst of a non-white student the guy at kansas state who wrote on his car whites only and go home and word on it but then you know it turned out after he filed the police report that it was all him i mean we could literally sit here for hours just listing these off and of course when the stories break everyone that's covering them and there's so much attention but then once the retraction is issued you know it's never the same amount of attention and uh, because of that, I bet a lot of the people that see the initial story think that they're actually true, that things like this actually happen. Remember in Chicago in 2017, early 2017, those four young black kids kidnapped a mentally disabled white kid and literally tortured him? They live streamed it on Facebook. Yeah, F Trump, F white people. They literally gagged a mentally disabled person, cut part of his scalp off because F white people, F Trump. Does anyone remember this? Why is no one bringing this up? And the reason that incident occurred is because unfortunately there are a lot of stupid people out there that happen to be violent sometimes. And when they believe this narrative that Trump is evil and racist and so are all of his supporters. Inevitably, stuff like that's going to happen, but it's okay because it's all part of the narrative. That's why people are faking these. The supply and demand is not at equilibrium. 
there are there's so much demand for these hate crimes in Trump's America. They need these hate crimes to fuel the narrative that Trump and his supporters are hateful, but they just aren't happening because the narrative is false. So what do they do? They have to artificially inflate the supply of hate crimes in order to meet their demand. And thankfully, we can usually expose them for being fake. But unfortunately, by that time, too many low resolution thinkers have heard the original story and they use that as cognitive reinforcement to the overarching narrative that their media is spoon feeding them, that Trump is evil and racist and Hitler homophobic, blah, blah, blah. He, today, he launched a global effort to, to decriminalize homosexuality. They still believe he's a homophobe. He's literally the first gay-friendly president in U.S. history. Even Barack Obama was against it when he was inaugurated. But uh, old Barry lights up the White House in a rainbow as if he was the one that legalized it. Like, sure. And they're saying, well, Trump isn't doing that because he wants to help gay people. He's doing that to spread American colonialism and imperialism to other parts of the world. Like, God forbid those American ideas of not throwing gay people off buildings spread to the Middle East. Why does his intent matter? It's like your girlfriend's like, I want you to buy me flowers. And you're like, okay, so you go and you buy her flowers. And then she's like, well, I didn't want you to buy him to buy me flowers. I wanted you to want to buy me flowers. <laughs> it's like... What? So we don't actually have that type of hatred in America. So we have to outsource it because it's trendy to be a victim. Everyone is a victim. He actually outsourced this by definition too because he hired two Nigerian guys to do it to him apparently. Can you imagine doing that? Close your eyes, slow your breathing, remove all sensory input except for the sound of my voice. Now imagine yourself. You live in the most prosperous country in the history of the world. Your standard of living is the highest in the history of the world. You live in the most tolerant society in the history of the world, but you still aren't happy. You know that you've worked hard and done okay for yourself, but everyone would think your accomplishments were a lot more impressive if you were a victim. So what do you do? Just say you're a victim. Cling tightly to this fantasy. Don't acknowledge that there are hundreds of success stories of people that grew up in situations that were so awful they are literally incomprehensible to you. If you do acknowledge that, you won't be able to then logically think of yourself as victimized. So just ignore it. Now, because you're a victim, everything that you have accomplished, you worked that much harder for. And if you don't succeed, it's not your fault. It's because people are victimizing you. Open your eyes. Now, really think about how pathetic that worldview is. I was like, ASMR. You could be a victim because you're a woman, because you're black, but then what if those overlap? Then your victim status is now higher and you could just keep going and going and going. There are conceivably an infinite number of ways that you could be victimized. So given that, what do you do? You narrow it down to the individual, not the group, the individual. The West figured this out hundreds of years ago. You think you're bringing something new to the discussion? Like, hey, some people have it rough. You're telling me that some people... It's like, that's life. And if you take that approach, if you take that, yep, that's life approach, they shame you for it. If someone has a genuinely hard life, but they become successful, they respond with, well, they couldn't have had it that hard since they were still able to be successful. It's like their entire identity is the identity of a victim. Why is that attractive? Why do you want to be a victim? That's why they hate the, the phrase man up because that translates to face your problems, take responsibility. And a lot of people in the comments from the other video liked the anecdote that I gave where like if something bad happens, I just think like, wow, this guy just can't get a break. And then I go from there. I don't make that my identity. You basically have two options. Let's ignore the fact that this country isn't hateful and that they're literally making all of it up to fuel their narrative of everyone is a victim. Let's say you're actually going through something really difficult. You can either A, become the victim. You can blame your lack of success on your situation and then you can just sit there and be unhappy with your situation, but also you have accomplished nothing. Or B, you can think, yeah, this really sucks, but I don't want it to keep sucking, so I'm just going to push through it. And because there's no systematic oppression in this country like they claim, they're making up these lies about how they're oppressed. So if they do succeed, they can feel like they really conquered, you know, they really slayed their dragons there. And then if they fail, well, they were oppressed. <laughs> they didn't have a fair shot to begin with. What's the definition of oppression? It's something like prolonged, cruel treatment of someone or whatever. And you got to break down these ideas. So they say that white men are oppressing women and people of color. So that means according to the 2010 census, like 32% of the population is oppressing everybody else. And if you think like, okay, well, what about the liberal men, the ones that are supposedly allies, the, the ones that white knight against other men? So let's assume that like one third of the 32% is an ally. So then you've got 21% of the country oppressing the rest. And if 24% of the total country is under 18, so they can't oppress people, then you've got like 16% of the country oppressing the other 68% that aren't white men. Good thinking. I mean, that's what happens when they don't have the intelligence or integrity to acknowledge differences between individuals regarding their capabilities. Then, since everyone is the same, the only reason that some people are doing well and some people aren't is because the people doing well are oppressing everybody else. 
I wrote in my school newspaper one time that I had faced more oppression being a straight white male Trump supporter than any minority student had because of their race or religion within the context of school. And that's 100% true. People got really mad, but it was true. I actually have a lot of really good stories about that. So I was thinking about bringing cameraman Badan on the show, the guy that typically films the out of the studio videos, since he was there for most of those stories. And we've got some of them on, some of them on video. It's pretty funny. So if you guys want to see that, let me know in the comments. Other than that, that's basically it. Let's try not to oppress too many people in the meantime, right? Because that's what we do. We wake up, make a cup of coffee. Uh, we get our kids off to school. We kiss our wives goodbye. And then the second the door closes. We just start the oppression. Just instant. The wives can't know, right? We can't let them know about the patriarchy. Uh, when we all met up that one time, every white man, and we all agreed things would just be a lot better if we were just oppressing everyone. That's why every time I see another white man, I just, just give him just a little wink or a little like, you know, just a little nod. Like, hey, man, you coming to uh, the meeting next week? Randy's going to be on the grill. It's like Fight Club, but we don't fight. We just oppress an entire gender just for the hell of it because we're evil white men. How evil can we be? What if we're, white men are 70% of all suicide victims? Like, at what proportion of total suicides do we do we stop, you know, being privileged? Like, when are they going to be like, all right, well, 70%, they were obviously the privileged class, but 71% of all suicides? Maybe we should stop being so hard on them. It's, I don't know. That's all I got. Hey, guys, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. That's probably the best way to convey that. You could leave me a comment. That works, too. If you haven't subscribed already, you could subscribe. You could share this video with your friends. These are just suggestions. You can do whatever you want. I'm not, I'm not a tyrant. I mean, it's a free country, right? But uh, thank you so much for watching, as always, and may God bless America. I missed.